this is true. Hi folks, it's a Sunday night and I'm at the test bench binging on YouTube videos and I am making up a set of leads. Upcoming video I'm going to be installing a rig selector and I will need a number of patch cables BNC to BNC and you can never have enough of those things and they do fail over time if you're taking them in and out. And in the past I have gone and bought made up cables hideously expensive. Uh, if you've got a roll of RG58 and uh, you buy the connectors separately, there's two advantages. One, it's much, much cheaper. And the second advantage, of course, is that you can change lengths to whatever you need. Now, in the past, I have done the crimping thing. Quite often, crimping on the uh, center pin never works for me, and I've had to solder them on, and it's just been a complete and utter disaster. You know, probably like 60 or 70% success rate, which means I'm throwing away a lot of connectors and a lot of center pins and it's just not a great way for me. Now, some people master this. I guess if you get the right connector and you get the right tools to crimp, you're always going to be on the right track. I've gone for a screw down solder center pin type connector and the type of connector that I've gotten, and I don't know where I got these. I think I may have gotten them on AliExpress. It says on here, a P Papa 601, uh, BNC plug RG58 type and uh, the center pin fits perfectly and um, it's got a number of parts and I'm going to show you that now and how I uh, put them together and by all means comment about how badly I do it. I don't have a proper wire stripper which would be probably a good start but uh, I will show you what I do how I get around it, and you can decide whether this is a good way of doing it or not. First thing, of course, is to show you the parts that are in this packet, because there is one, two, three, four, five parts, six parts if you include the center pin. So it's a little bit of a jigsaw puzzle. So these are the parts as they come. And so what we need to do is we need to grab our RG58 cable, 50 ohms, and we need to get the stuff on in the correct order. The first thing we need to do is slide on this part here, uh, which is the screw type part that goes on first. And it's probably a good idea not to strip anything before you put any of this on. Now, to stop it from slipping down, what I normally do is I just cut my alligator clip on there so it doesn't slide down. And then the next bit that goes on is our washer so that slides on next and that's the uh, washer on so that slides down and then the next thing is the uh, rubber grommet there it is there once again quite a tight fit but we get it on there is a piece that goes on last after you strip your uh, your wire now I'm looking at about seven mils and as you will know I'm a precise person so I'll go yep that's seven mils and a wire stripper would be probably ideal but we don't have one so we just roll and cut all the way around And once we get that top insulation off, you thread your wires out. And you need to trim, that was seven mils. And then once you are spread that out, they're saying that uh, from the where you stripped back up, you can probably look at the diagram, is about four mils. You're going to measure up about four mils from where you've cut to actually strip the insulation and it's almost halfway it's probably a little bit less than halfway and then you're just going to uh strip that uh insulation off the center conductor 
And I usually give this center conductor a bit of a twist if it's braided. So that is uh, how it uh, is all going to happen. So this is a center pin. Um, probably should be about a mil longer than that, but as long as you can see the uh, the braid through the little hole that you can see on the side of the uh, pin, you should be fine. So obviously you want to make sure you get all of the parts of the wire in there. If there's only fluffy bits sticking out the side, that's going to cause you some issues. And we're going to get a bit of solder. Now we need to heat this up and get it hot enough so that it's going to uh, accept the solder. And then we try not to let it fall off. Now when it gets hot enough, you'll, uh, you'll see the solder disappear in the little window that's there. You hold it there for long enough it will disappear now if you feel like you've uh, you've overdone it and there's a little bit too much solder there you can um always grab a little bit of a uh, solder wick just remove any excess that's there but you just got to make sure that you don't make the actual center pin fall off now if this is on properly i should be able to pull on it and it doesn't come off so we're happy with that so now what we need to do is we need to get that uh, last piece of the jigsaw puzzle and fit it over the top like so. And we just need to make sure that we, uh, we give it a trim so that uh, it uh, isn't uh, too much uh, braid sticking out. I'll get that done and I'll show you the screw down. In case all of that was very confusing for you, I'm hoping this will help. That is the first part that goes on. And then we slide our uh, washer on. Then the rubber grommet, and they all obviously squeeze up to each other, close to where the connector is. And then I'm hoping you can see there, I've stripped the necessary um, distances that are on the. Uh, information sheet and you fold this down and there is a final part prior to soldering on this center connector and that is this tiny little part here and what we do is we slide that over and it sits over the end like that push it down make it nice and snug and then you will trim give this little haircut with your side cutters Snip, 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 snip around so it's nice and neat. And then after you've put your center pin on and you've sold it through the little hole, the center pin has a little hole on it. You need to put just enough solder on there and make it just hot enough so that the solder gets sucked into the hole and you don't have a giant lump of solder there. So that's the thing. You've got to get enough solder on there to sweat the actual center pin onto the uh, braided center conductor or if it's not a braided set it might be a solid in some types of cable I'm not sure but you've got to make sure that you've made good contact and you give your little center pin a bit of a tug to make sure that you have actually got it on and then uh, you push this onto the center conductor until you feel it go into position you usually feel a, a little click as it goes into position but you just make sure you've got it seated as far in as it'll go and then you screw it down using some multi-grips or a spanner um, as tight as you can get it without being crazy gorilla strong on it. And uh, that should be a completed connector. Hopefully. Your mother. <laughs> well. It certainly took a bit of massaging, but uh, if you push it down hard on the table and you've got enough uh, force, you can usually get this to screw down. Now, I would say it would probably be um, a lot easier if you had a vise that you could hold one end in, I reckon, but uh, I've managed to start that. You'll work out a system that works for you. And there you have it. That's, uh, that's one end um, done.
Stripping, don't worry, it's not going to happen. So we ship about four mils off that. So we end up with about three, three or four mils of the uh, center conductor showing. Like I said in the rest of the video, the order of things on this actual uh, setup here, we we feed the threaded part on first. Then we have our washer. Then we have our rubber. grommet and over the top here we feed that uh, piece that looks like that we trim off the uh, the excess and then center conductor goes on here and away we go so remember strip to about seven mils and then take off about three or four mils to put your center conductor on those measurements are approximate. If you want to check them against the uh, freedom measurements, the inches that are given on the actual data sheet, uh, be my guest. You probably shouldn't trust my mathematics. It's uh, bad at the best of times and atrocious most of the other times. And that is one connector done. Now, what I usually do also is uh, I meter out the continuity uh, test. What the heck? And I will test to make sure that we haven't got a short. And I will also meet a pin, send a pin to send a pin. And if I'm feeling really, really uh, worried about it and how it mechanically behaves, I'll plug it in to an actual uh, socket and I'll short out the ends and I'll test both ends as well to make sure it mates nicely. That is how I struggle to do <laughs> the soldered down uh, connector. Okay, we're going to do our test of our cables. You need to calibrate the nano VNA, and I will do that very, very quickly. Um, so we go to cal, calibrate, open. So we have our three test pieces that go on. Um, we need to go open first. So we look for the one that's. Uh, that's the open one, handle zero, we go open, then we get the uh, short circuit one, which is the one that's got the, uh, the metal inside it. Put it down and go short, sorry, short. And then we're going to put our load calibration on, which is a 50 ohm load. That's the one that uh, on mine, it has a uh, bronze top. And you can see it's not a short circuit inside. It's got the white inside. Get that screwed down. Hit load. Isolated. Isolate it and then we have to do through. Now through, we're going to calibrate that as well. And I'm going to put the entire length of cable on for the through because I'm going to use both these cable ends as part of the, uh, the test setup. So we'll calibrate using this. This is through and done. And the trace that we want is uh, the log mag trace, which is already set up. And it's reading minus 0.03 with this setup. So unfortunately, obviously the adapters have a small effect, but for one to 30 megs I've got this set up for shouldn't be a big deal. Um, so I'm going to leave that joiner 
on one side because it will marry with the other connector adapter that I've got for BNC. So that's one BNC adapter. This is the other. That's our first cable. And we'll put one end in another. At the moment it's reading minus 95, which we would expect. And from 1 to 30 megs, we have minus 0.13 dB, pretty much flat across the uh, across the device. We have an SWR reading at the bottom there. That's giving us a 1 is to 1.06 as well. So we, we can say to ourselves that this cable is looking just fine. Well, you're still here. Thank you for sticking around right to the end of the video. I hope this video has been of some assistance. I think it's a great thing to uh, be able to make your own patch cables because, like I said, you can make them to your own length and it will save you money. Picture has not finished. Uh, I'm building up the inspiration to paint and I also need more time. Work is slamming me really, really hard, hence this very short video. I'm hoping it'll be helpful to someone. Throw your comments below about things I am doing wrong because I'm sure that there'll be some great suggestions from people that are way more experienced at this than I am. 7-3 and I shall see you in an upcoming video. Uh, there's, the next video is going to be a lot of stuff. I am refurbishing a flame-proof key that uh, it's going to be a lot of fun to get going. I am building a rig switching box and revamping the shack. So I shall see you shortly in that video.